I consider myself extremely blessed with some amazing opportunities. I got married when I was fairly young, at 19. I met my childhood sweetheart when I was 17, Susan. I consider that the best decision I've ever made. As it happens, she has borne me the most amazing two divine daughters, and through them, we have learned what it is like to manage, but most importantly, to lead. Manage being how to get things done through other people, but to lead, to be genuinely obsessed with the development of others, to be less self-centered, but to be more other-centric. Most economies in the world, when you look at their structure, looks like a diamond. A small super rich and a small super poor, extreme poverty, but a huge middle class. In South Africa, that looks more like a triangle. There's very few that are super rich, a small middle class, whose job it is to look after even a bigger pool of people that are in extreme poverty. When we say we are moving 400,000 families into the middle class and defining the middle class as those people that earn 8 to 10 US dollars a day, in the South African context, we are actually talking about taking people out of extreme poverty to just being poor. But we are not building a sustainable middle class. And the broader good is about how can we improve the quality of lives of the majority of our people so that on a composite basis, our people are moving forward in space and in time. You know, when <coughs> management is about the effectiveness and efficiencies in cl climbing the corporate ladder of success, it's about moving forward in space and in time. Leadership, on the other hand, begs the question as to whether this ladder is leaning against the correct wall. You then realize that it is all about people. And the only way that one finds their own purpose and sense of usefulness is when you have managed to touch other human beings in a very significant but also very simple ways. That's why leadership moves away from self to the other. So it's about talking about notions like transformation and increased profitability. It's talking about things of nation building and yet still be a good corporate citizen. You see, the leadership concepts are exactly the same, whether in the private or in the public sector. Always act in the best interest of the entity, comma, and not in the best interest of the shareholder, nor the best interest of the employees. It doesn't matter whether it's public or private, because what are we involved with? We are really involved with the duties of faith, good faith, the duties of care, skill, and diligence. So for us, being a good corporate citizen means doing the right things. We say it's about people first, it's about the planet, and then it's about profits. We are proudest when we serve others, not when we are self-serving. We are happiest when we are always focusing on the broader good. It's about socio-economic transformation. We need to be forward-looking and giving effect to the South Africa of Holy Tlatla Nelson Mandela's dreams. I really believe that in that first 400 MPs cohort of Holy Tlatla Nelson Mandela, any of them would have gone on to become the greatest president the world has ever seen. So Africa has talent. So when you are given an opportunity to serve, that's what it is, just an opportunity to serve. You say, how can I come in in the shortest period of time, make my contribution? It's like a relay. You've got the baton, you run the fastest and the hardest and the cleverest. And then you hand it over to somebody younger and much more hardworking than you so that they can give it a step change. Your job is to lay the foundation so that your children find an easier life so that they're better off than us.